In this video, we're going to look at how you can download and install CX1 trial from Omron. This is a 30 day trial and can be downloaded from the Omron website. So let's get started. From within Google, type Omron CX1 trial download. And the first link you get to is CX1 Omron in Europe. We're going to click on that. And this brings me to the Amron website. From within the website, I'm going to select CX1 trial right there. I'm going to click on this and it's going to ask me to download. You need to register for an account here. So let's assume you registered and we're going to agree. I've registered there. So now the download has started right here. It's quite a large download. It's 2.3 gigs and it's in the form of a zip file. So we're going to wait for that to download and we'll continue. The download is just about to complete. And once the download is complete, we can go ahead and unzip that file. So the download's complete. Let's open up that file and see what's in it. With the file downloaded, we can go ahead and unzip it. You can see it's a .zip. If you have Windows 10 or Windows 7, you can simply double click and it'll open up the file and show you the contents. Inside it, there should be a serial number, a temporary serial number for the 30 day trial. And there will also be a CX1 software. So we're gonna unzip both of these so we're going to select extract all in Windows 10 and I'm going to extract all these files into a folder I created called CX1. So let's select extract. The extract process is about to complete and it should now open up the folder for me, which it has. And inside that I have another zip folder and the serial number. Within this zip folder, I'm going to unzip again by double clicking. And inside this, I have another file, which is an ISO file, which is an image file for a CD-ROM. So I need to extract this again. So I'm going to click extract. Remember, this is the second extract we've had to do. So with that done, I'm going to hit extract. And it's now extracting the second file. With that complete, it will now open up the folder. And when it's in this folder, we have two files, this ISO file, which is a disk image and a document here about installation. So okay. this file, we have two options to open it. So we're going to first right click. You can install an application like Magic ISO, which will mount the file into a virtual CD-ROM for you. Or you can use open with and Windows 10, you can select Windows Explorer. I've done that now. You can see it's created a virtual F drive, a DVD drive, and it's called CX1. And within that are all the installation files required. So I scroll down, I'll see my file I'm looking for, which is going to be setup.exe. setup.exe. I'm going to double click on setup.exe to start the installation process. It asked me, did I want to run this as an administrator? And I selected yes. And I'm going to select my default language, English, and click OK. So now we can start installing the CX1 software. Let's click Next, accept the licensing agreement, and let's enter the license key. Let's quickly review where we can find the licensing key again. First of all, we unzipped this file here into a folder and within that folder we had another zip file and we had the serial number in a text file here. So we're going to open that serial number and copy it from the file into the installer. We need to enter a company name. Let me just enter test and click next. 
This will give us a 30 day trial of CX1. We're going to enter Europe and we're going to click Next. We're going to put into the default programs on the C drive in my case. Yours might differ and you can press Browse to change it. Let's click Next. We want to do a complete installation, so we'll just click Next. And it's now going to tell me it wants to install the library, the function block library. That's fine. So let's just click Next. And it's asked me where I want to put it. Again, we'll just click Next. With that done, we can actually start the physical install. In my case, I have an older version of the communications middleware installed, so I'll just click OK. And let's watch it install. Yes, in my case, you probably won't get that message. And now it's installing the software. It's now asking what Ethernet card I want to use, and I only have the one physically connected. It's not actually connected at the moment, so I'm just going to click OK. Now it's going to install the USB drivers. CX server. So the CX1 is a suite of programs, so it's going to install each of them separately. So that's why it's installing so many different things. The CX server device drivers. The update utility. Now it's installing the common tools. It's installing the fins drivers. Fins drivers are used when connecting using the fins protocol with the Omron PLCs, as opposed to Ethernet, or Ethernet IP, I should say. Installing the Smart Active Parts component. Great, so it's installed everything and now wants to restart my computer. For now, I'm going to click No because I'm recording this video. So let me just go No and click Finish. You'll need to restart your computer so it can install the various drivers. So just click Finish. To start the software, we'll find Amron in Windows 10 under O, and there's a CX1 subfolder. And if I open that up, I can see all, if I open that up, I have the different components. So these are all the different programs I have. So let's look at CL Protocol, for example, or I can load CX Programmer, there's CX Programmer, there's a Net Configuration tool, and there's a PLC Backup tool. The other one we're interested in is CX Designer, there's the main CX Designer, there's a How To, How to Recover Data, and there's a few different setup tools there as well. In this semester, we're going to be using CX Programmer, CX Designer, we'll be using CX Simulator as well, and that's 
really it for this semester. Just a quick recap for the video. We downloaded and installed the CX1 software from the Amron website. It's a 30 day trial and we installed a serial number. To do that, we downloaded this file here, .zip, and we unzipped that and it created this folder here. Within that folder, there was again another zip file and the serial number which we need during the installation process. When I unzip this file, it creates this folder here. The ISO file is used for a CD image file, it's an open format, and we need to load that. To do that, we right click and we went to open with. You have different options, you could use an application like Magic ISO and that will allow you to mount it, so IS, a Magic ISO mount and I can mount that as a virtual drive. Or native within Windows 10, you can just go mount with Internet Explorer, so open with Windows Explorer, and it will create a virtual drive, as you can see down here, a DVD drive FCX1. Within that, I scrolled all the way down, and I ran the setup file, and we ran the setup to install it. That's just a quick review of the video. I hope this helps. And I'll see you in the next video or in class. Thank you.